I'm Rosemary Miller here with John Dobas, the editor of three of Forbes' investment newsletters, Forbes Billionaire Investor, Forbes Dividend Investor, and Forbes Premium Income Report. Thank you so much for joining us, John. Thank you, Rosemary. It's always a pleasure to be here. John, you have referred to the current stock market as the Flip Wilson stock market, and you've probably heard this quote, the cost of living is going up and the chance of living is going down. John, I want to know what you mean by this being a Flip Wilson stock Flip market. Flip Wilson market. So Flip was one of the most brilliant comics of the 1960s and 1970s. There's a lot of kids out there that, good for you, I think you, you've heard of Flip Wilson, but uh, he was a marquee entertainer, 1970 to 74. He had the most successful uh, non-late night variety show on TV. What I mean by a Flip Wilson market, the market's performance year to date in 2023 is a mirror image. It's been flipped from what we had last year in 2022. 2022, a year when consumer discretionary stocks absolutely stunk up the joint. It was the worst performing sector, down more than 36% for the year. Guess where it is in relative performance this year? Numero uno, up already like 15%. And when we're talking consumer discretionary, we mean retail stores. A lot of it is retail stores. But the broad category is stuff that people buy that they don't really need to buy. So cruises, nice clothes, uh, expensive jewelry, that kind of stuff. And last year, it was not the time for it. Another sector that was really trounced last year was uh, was technology. Led by the big names, you've heard of them, of course. Uh, it's well-publicized. Meta platforms had a very rough year. Amazon definitely took it on the chin. Uh, companies like Salesforce.com, CRM, uh, down from over 350 bucks down to 100. They've had nice bounces, though, this year. So tech got trashed in 2022, but it's been a, a resurrection. It's been a Lazarus moment or a Lazarus six weeks, really, in 2023 for technology. John, while we're talking about tech stocks, I'm curious, why don't they usually pay back high dividends? Well, uh, typically you get higher dividend payouts from companies that are in very well-established industries. That's a polite way of saying your industry ain't growing too much. But if you are a younger company that's still you know, on a growth trajectory, you should have projects that yield you, uh, you know, 10% or more returns on capital. And if, if you're able to invest in your own business with that free cash flow and get great returns like that, you're, you're better off doing that and growing the business, growing the bigger pie. But when you're a, a, an established company, like, a, you know, an electric utility or a, a healthcare company, drug, drug company like Pfizer and Merck and all those, um, and in, in technology, you have established mature <laughs> grow, uh, mature companies like Intel, IBM, uh, Seagate Technologies. You know, they're not trying to be the next revolutionary company doing X, Y, Z. They're not trying to be the Uber of this, that, or the other. They're just going around making computers, chips, memory. Um, and, and they, you know, the growth opportunities are more muted. They're not, you know, 15, 20%. So you're better off by uh, keeping your shareholders close to you by uh, by using that money to keep them around by paying them dividends. So uh, this makes me kind of think of Microsoft and how they recently laid off, what, 5%, almost 5% of their workforce. And it was recently reported that 100 of those people were in the industrial metaverse space and they've completely cut this team. Are they waiting on players like Meta to to be the first ones in Metaverse because they have something like their windows to fall back on. You know, I thought Metaverse was just some cute excuse for not growing your earnings as fast as you should by Mark Zuckerberg last year because it just kind of came out of left field. No, 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 man. Don't judge us on this Facebook thing. We're going to the Metaverse. And, 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 and I think the, like, the joke was on the entire industry. So yeah, man, we're going to the meta too. And uh, and so, you know, these folks, I don't want to joke about people's, you know, livelihoods, but those folks that got laid off in Redmond, Washington, or wherever they're based for Microsoft, they're probably being picked up doing something. You know, metaverse, let me ask you, Rosemary, you're younger than I am. What is the metaverse? 
in the metaverse is basically this virtual reality world where people are expected to live in. And I think it became popular, actually, oh. because of the pandemic. We thought we'd be forced uh -huh. inside and having to interact right. with each other in a virtual space. You know what they say? Cool story, bro. You ever you ever hang out in the metaverse? Not once. I've never been there. Uh, <laughs> I, can't, I can't get it on my car. You know, We're, let's go to the metaverse. I, so anyway, there's plenty of things to do. Um, yes, human beings have shown no limit for their desire to do useless stuff as long as they stay out of the way of people who have real power in society. Um, so maybe we all will burrow down into the metaverse and spend our real money on fake stuff. Um, but I think that's kind of a distraction. But then again, I'm I'm an old man with very few ideas. So before we get into some of your top stock picks, John, I'm curious about what what are your thoughts on this rolling recession term I've been seeing lately? What, what does that mean? Too. I've basically really been seeing it in, in the tech world. You talked a bit about tech stocks. What does this mean? Well, a uh, rolling recession is the idea that an economic slowdown does not hit the entire economy uh, simultaneously, all parts of it. Uh, the rolling, <laughs> rolling thunder or rolling, rolling recession means that, well, look at last year. We were just talking about technology, how they had such a rough time. They said, you know what? We're not going to be growing for those rates that we thought we were uh, in the pandemic. We're slowing down. You can call it what you want if you're getting laid off. Well, you know, the old quote is, it's a recession if uh, somebody else is losing their job. It's a depression if you are. Uh, but that's, I, I forgot who said that, but it's it's pretty true. Um, so technology arguably had their recession last year. Home building, when the rates, when 30-year mortgage rates went from, you know, below 3% up above 6%, uh, home building stocks were trashed. And that was all last year. Home building stocks, by the way, among the biggest winners so far in 2023. So the recession, if you want to call it that, or the ill effects or the predator from that great movie back in 1987 with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Carl Weathers, this sh it was a shape shifter. It changed forms. It hit one sector and it left it and it went into another sector. But I think a lot of it has to do with interest rates, obviously, because once interest rates started coming down last fall around late October, a lot of things that were really bad started getting better. Uh, among those, technology, uh, real estate, real estate investment trusts. Uh, those anybody who knows those probably loves those. You, it, it, it lets you buy under real estate through a security. You know, big a big one now is uh, the self storage space. For many years, it's been a big one. We've got a pick in the dividend investor newsletter, uh, NSA Storage Affiliates Trust, NSA. So they are. Uh, National Storage Affiliates is what it's called. The ticker symbol is NSA, like National Security Administration Agency. Uh, so, yeah, Digital Realty Trust, they own data centers, you know, the things that you need to make the Internet go. Uh, big computers, server farms, that kind of stuff. Uh, over a 4% yield with Digital Realty Trust also. That's DLR. So, um, yeah, the rolling recession, man, it's uh, oh, and it hit it hit consumer stocks it hit consumer discretionary last year when people were fearing about the recession. And now it seems like bring it on. If there's a recession, let's see it. But we don't see it yet. You know, three point four percent unemployment rate lowest since 1969. Uh, high profile layoffs from all these Amazon and Microsoft and, and Meta. But those people getting laid off from those tech companies, although you hear about it on every newscast, uh, it hasn't affected the unemployment rate yet. John, so, John I want to stop you right yeah. there about a, a newscast. <laughs> Lately in the news, we have been seeing a bunch of flying objects being shot out the air. I think it's been about four within the past week or so. How is this affecting the market? Uh, the market's been going down as these shoot downs have happened. <laughs> Although I don't know if there's any correlation. There's probably more of a correlation between who wins the Super Bowl and stocks for the year ahead, but that's a different story for a different day. Um, you know, when that one, the first balloon that was spotted over Montana, then drifted southeasterly across the U.S., then got shot down over uh, Surfside Beach, South Carolina. Interestingly, or predictably, maybe you might say, Shares of Lockheed Martin, LMT, 
the biggest defense contractor, bar none, uh, it was up about five or six percent. It's F-22 Raptor was the uh, military aircraft that delivered the fatal missile <laughs> to the Chinese balloon. And I guess the uh, Raptors have been the ones that have been picking off those up in the Yukon. And I heard just the other uh, one was shot down over Lake Huron. So um, and then, the you know, the U.S. fired off the uh, ICBM off the coast of Canada. Uh, Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. Not a real one, but just to, just to show we still have them okay. cleaning the pipes. But you're not seeing much action in how this is affecting the stocks? Overall stock market, no. But Lockheed Martin has been up. Yeah. Lockheed Martin, um, I, I, I rude myself for not buying it below $400 last fall. And it went away. It went all the way to 500 And I'm like, damn. So it, when it pulled back to about 440 I'm like, Fibonacci, don't fail me now. We jumped in, and sure enough, we're higher on that. So, John, what should we expect? Last week, we had our worst week of 2023. What should we expect moving forward? We did have the worst week of 2023, but you've got to look at the context in which it happened. Um, you know, we're, we're in the nice pattern of two weeks higher, one week lower, two higher. You know, so we're still climbing. And if you take that chart back to, you know, late October, you got a nice little uptrend on your hands. Of course, what matters from here probably is inflation and how the Federal Reserve, the Federal Open Market Committee, reacts to it. Uh, last week or whenever it was, two weeks ago, when Jerome Powell was being interviewed by David Rubenstein, he, he acknowledged that there are disinflationary trends at work that are looked upon favorably by the Fed. And uh, then, you know, then they rolled out the uh, Fed governors talking the following week saying, no, 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 that big jobs report, eh, we may have to go higher than we thought. And that kind of took the little edge off the market. But then again, maybe it was just people, you know, we, we, we've gone so far in 2023. Um, it's, you know, it's natural for pullbacks to happen. But keep an eye out. Consumer price index comes out every first Tuesday, uh, actually second Tuesday of the month. We got that coming up. And uh, it's expected to show another month over month decline. Uh, I'm sorry, year over year uh, slowdown in the rate of inflation. You know, you, we don't have falling prices yet, not by a long shot. And, um, and and the Fed doesn't even really want falling prices. What they want is price stability, which they define as two percent inflation rate. And uh, we're still above, you know, five six, and we got to get that thing down. All right, there you have it, folks. Thank you so much, John.